Hi everyone, in this video I will demonstrate how I render jewelry in the Nomad Sculpt program. I believe this will be a great video to help you understand the process. The first thing I want to tell you is that I have created a special set of HDRI maps which are available on my Gumroad page. To add them to Nomad Sculpt, you will first need to download them. Then import them using the import button. Click import, select the file, choose the necessary files, and they will appear in this area. I created 12 maps that are great for jewelry and another 12 for rendering characters. However, my favorites are the first and second ones. You can experiment with them and see which ones you like the most. The next thing I want to mention is that I design my jewelry for 3D printing. Therefore, I make the prongs longer and don't bend them toward the stone. If we want to create jewelry for rendering, it would be preferable to make the prongs smaller and bent. Let's first prepare the model for rendering by bending all the prongs. What else do we need to do? Let's merge all the parts, except for the stones, using the boolean command, and smooth the joints a bit. We also need materials. Let's create our versions of gold and silver. Switch to the lit PBR mode. As I mentioned, you can choose any of my HDRI maps that you like. I usually use the first one, it's my favorite. You can also adjust the exposure and tweak the sliders as you wish. Regarding the metal materials, let's create them. There are pre-made options, but if you don't like the color, you can clone the gold material and adjust it to your preference. For example, I would change the gold color to Ashus Sikiasi 71. Roughness at 0.2 will be sufficient. Let's also create a silver material. Clone it, choose the color HSC8C8C8 and leave the roughness at 0.2. It can be 0.1 or 0.15. Rename this as silver925 and save it. Rename the gold to 14KY gold and save it too. For the stones, I usually choose the refraction material and set these two parameters to the maximum. Sometimes for colored stones you can enable absorption which slightly changes the stone's appearance. You can also add a second shade. Let's choose red for example. It will be a red ruby. The roughness for the stone should be zero and there should be a bit of metalness. Choose a darker red shade for a deeper color. I'll change the background color to black. To achieve a smoother surface, you can enable general smooth shading. However, this applies to the entire model and we'll lose the facets of the stone. We can separately adjust smooth shading for each element without applying it to the stones. Do the same for small diamonds. For metal, I enable the smooth shading parameter. Next, 
we can move on to the post process settings. I usually set it to 150 passes and maximize this parameter. You can create a preset for the post process so you don't have to adjust it each time. Clone this setting. Rename it for distinction and go to the settings below. I don't use these two settings, so let's move to Ambient Occlusion and adjust it to look good depending on the jewelry we are rendering. Next, you can add Depth of Field. Then comes Bloom. You can add a bit if you like, I don't use it. You can tweak tone mapping a bit. In the Color Grading section, I adjust the curve like this. Sometimes I make it SE shaped. Curvature can be used to add dark details in the crevices. I also add a bit of sharpness effect. As for these two settings, I'm not sure. I don't like the result. I can't explain all these settings precisely. I do everything intuitively to my taste. Once we've done all these settings, we can save our preset for future renders. In general, experiment and you'll achieve great results. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.